capital gains tax computation. Now, you know, uh, just like in profits and gains of business and profession, you had income and various expenses. Similarly, in case of capital gains computation also, you have basically your uh, receipts, which are the sale proceeds, and then you have your cost. So instead of expenses, you have cost, right? But before I explain this entire table to you, let me just explain one thing to you, which I think will then make it easier for you to kind of understand this whole thing. Now, let us say, for example, I'll take you through a life cycle of a transaction. Let's say there's this gentleman A. Okay. He buys a piece of land, which is a capital asset. Right? When he buys a piece of land, then at that point in time, he has to pay stamp duty. Okay. Stamp duty, in case you are not aware, is a levy which is levied on purchase and sale of immovable property. To understand this, you can also talk to your parents. They will be able to explain this thing to you even better. And if there's any kind of a sale deed or something that you have, go and please have a look at it. Right? Plus, there are brokers who, I mean, there are or there may be brokers who will arrange a piece of land for you. So you might also pay some brokerage charges. Right? Once you pay all these three amounts, let's say the total of this is X. This is known as the cost of acquisition. To acquire this capital asset, what are the various costs that I paid? Right? Now, three years down the line, this gentleman realizes that the value of this land is now 2x. Okay. So he again goes to this broker and tells him, can you please arrange a buyer for me? This broker is very happy. He gets a buyer and this time what happens is he sells the land. Right. When he sells the land, land he gets 2x as the income. Right. Now, this is not the income actually, this is the receipt, if I may call it. But what is the profit that this gentleman made? The profit he made was this 2x minus cost of acquisition. I mean, if I give you 10 rupees, okay, and go and tell you, go and get something from the market and sell it to someone else. Let's say you go and get a pair of shoes. They obviously don't come for 10 rupees, but I'm just giving you an example. You sell those shoes for 20 rupees, right? What is the profit that you make? You make only 10 rupees of profit, which is 20 minus 10. Why? Because the balance 10, you have to obviously pay it back to me, right? So similarly, when you sell it for 2x, the cost of acquisition is x, then the profit is x. This profit is nothing but the capital gain, right? Now it might just be that again, because this guy is getting you a customer, he might again charge you some brokerage. So if you have to pay any further brokerage, that again has to be reduced from here. It might just be that this buyer may say you only pay stamp duty. If you agree to pay that, even that has to be reduced. So all these things are fact based, right? But if you see the transaction cycle, this is the way it works. So you buy an asset, you incur some cost in terms of getting the ownership, then you sell the asset, you might again incur some expenses from the sale proceeds, you reduce whatever cost you have incurred to get the profit, which profit is nothing but the capital gains. Now, in some cases, there is a concept of indexation also of cost and you know, expenses that I will explain to you subsequently when we deal with the indexation. Coming back so how do I compute my taxable capital gain? This is the end result that I want to reach. So first thing I see is what is my sale consideration for this section 48 is important because it that tells you what all is to be included in full value of consideration. So let us say this consideration is 5x. I took it 2x there, but I am because I'm taking a couple of things over here. So I'm just changing the number to 5x. Right? The cost of acquisition, let's say is 2x, the cost of improvement. This is basically, let's say in our example only, if we purchase land, but we found that it is uneven, 
to get it evened out before we can sell it we incurred a cost of x so that is also reduced from here expenditure on transfer let's say this is again x so the total cost that i incurred which is in this blue section is 4x 5x is the sale consideration 4x is my cost so x is my capital gain capital gain is sale consideration minus total cost right now out of this x in some cases what happens is which is basically dealt with in section 54 cases these capital gains are exempt okay we'll study these in detail but let's say for example when you sell a residential house property and you purchase another residential house property the capital gains arising on the sale of the first one are exempt from tax subject to certain conditions so if some capital gain is exempt from tax you mark it over here if it is not this is zero and taxable capital gains are computed by comp reducing from this capital gain the exemptions so which is x if this was let's say 0.5 x then this would have been 0.5 x so i think what is important for you to understand is that you know how is, is this computed how does it work in the practical life i mean just by mugging up these things you might understand it for now you may even go and replicate the entire thing in the question in the examination but from a longer term perspective it's always good to have a sense of how these things are done let's move on to the next video now